And this is Benedict Manda, I'm the FT's correspondent in Buenos Aires. Um, the earthquake measured 8.2 on the Richter scale and struck some 50 miles off Chile's north coast, not far from the mining town of Iquique, which is quite near the Peruvian border. It was so strong that it could be felt in Bolivia's capital, La Paz, which is nearly 300 miles away from the epicenter. So far, the government has reported a death toll of six, and almost a million people were forced to evacuate their homes. The earthquake triggered a small tsunami with waves higher than two meters hitting the coastline, destroying some fishing boats and ports. It also caused landslides blocking off roads and damaged electricity and water infrastructure. But on the whole, there's been limited damage with most structures in Chile built to resist powerful earthquakes, given that this is one of the most vulnerable areas in the world. Um, so far, the government's responded pretty quickly, uh, ordering people to evacuate low-lying areas and declaring a state of emergency, sending in riot police and military onto the streets to avoid looting. So far, there's been no major damage reported, particularly in the, in the major indus industrial installations. And yes, crucially, the big copper mines in the area, which are some of the most important in the country, if not the world, are saying that their operations are functioning normally. And this is obviously extremely important because Chile is not only highly dependent on copper exports for its own internal spending, but it's it's the biggest copper exporter in the world. So uh, copper prices actually jumped a bit when, when the news of the disaster came out. But the real concern is that maybe this is not the big earthquake that geologists have been predicting, predicting in this area for a while. But then again, you know, that could come tomorrow or it could come in 50 years' time. So we'll just have to wait and see.